Landlords in Nigeria, like their counterparts in advanced economies, are anxious over what may be their fate in the hands of their tenants in the days and months ahead, especially those of them who are workers that have been forced home from their workplaces by the rampaging coronavirus. Now, as a way of cushioning the impact of COVID-19 on their citizens, some governments in the advanced countries of the world have suspended rent uh, payment uh, while the cri crisis lasts. France is one of such countries. In Nigeria, there are indications that landlords are increasing rents and many tenants whose house rents are due or will be due in the coming months will struggle to pay, considering that workers and traders alike are now cooling off at home on government directives to prevent the spread of the dreaded COVID-19. Joining us in the studio to share our experience and to discuss the challenges associated with rent increase is Ifi Anene, who is an engineer also. Good afternoon, Ifi. Hi, uh, if you will saw your tweet a um, couple of days ago, yeah. um, telling you know you know kind of almost calling the gov the governor of Lagos State Babaji Desol to please come to your aid uh, because of increase uh, you know sudden increase in your rent. Tell us what happened, how much, what's you know what what's your experience. Okay, so before now, it was um, it was a very cordial relationship, and I like to put out there that there was no altercation or there was no problem. There were no problems initially, so everything was moving fine, and I'm, I'm opportune to be able to work remotely and still earn my salary. So. Um, personally, I was like, okay, I'm just going to try, keep up with my commitments, financial commitments, pay my bills, prepare for my rent. But all that turned in a second when I got a mail from my, from my caretaker agent saying that my rent, my next rent, which is about five months' time, was going to increase by 200,000. 200,000? 200,000. Without, there was no prior notice, nothing? No, there was no prior notice to this. So it was, in that moment, it was mentally distressing you know a lot of thoughts were flashing my mind and um, it, it raised a lot of concerns for me now we are not in this alone in the sense that coronavirus is not something that is secluded to Nigeria the whole world is going through this sure. the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics hasn't hasn't released their results their the their un unemployment statistics yet but we are sure the numbers will go up That's right. um, industries are taking a massive hit the oil price is crashing and because all all revenues are mainstay in Nigeria. Once oil price crashes, government funding is bound to reduce, money reduces in the economy. The aviation industry shut down hospitality. Mm -hmm. So in that time, all I was thinking about was how many other people are in the same shoes with me. I am able to speak out, I'm able to reach out or say something about it and um, or even tweet at the governor. Tweet about mm. it. But there are so many people who have lost their livelihoods, who are currently losing their health because mental health is de deteriorating. That's there right. are clear indications of depression rising, anxiety rising, poverty rising, livelihoods. It is it is it is um, it doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. So in that moment I was like, no. We're not talking about even paying your rent because it is, is many people are going to struggle to pay to their pay rent. the actual rent. The even. actual rent. Mm. And it's no fault of theirs. It's no fault of the landlords as well who have this private property as an investment. Mm. So I, I was like, how many other people are in the same shoes with me? And I felt, okay, the last resort I had, I had was to tweet about it. Okay, this is a conversation we need to have. Right. Um, other countries are sent, giving out palliatives. I mean, the United States gave out $1,200 mm -hmm. to, to adults and about $500 to children. Um, Canada, Canada gave 2000 2, Some other countries are saying, okay, you know what, rent, don't, don't take mortgage. There are some ways to just cushion. It is not mm -hmm. even enough for them, but to cushion. The average Nigerian man or woman is on their own. Right. No one is giving you any money. You have to figure... So, we have to put this out in as much as we, we have our pressing problems. We have things that are unique to Nigeria. Mm. In as much as the government is fighting on all fronts to battle the coronavirus disease, we also need to have these conversations. Landlords shouldn't be talking about increasing rent. Okay, take for okay. instance a uh, business. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, before I cut you short there, yeah. I was just going to say, uh, 
Normally, when people get into rent, uh, yeah. when, when you take a house, for instance, for rent, yeah. there, there is a duration before the increment, and the increment ideally should be around 5%, if I'm correct. Yeah. Now, 200,000, is, is that 5% no, that, that, no, of no, even no, what you clear. pay? No, it's, even, it's above 14% it's above, it's above of what I pay. So there are, there are two sides to this. There is the there is the moral or tone sensitive aspect of mm -hmm. okay the whole world is going through this together and we shouldn't increase rent and then there's the legal aspect of it which i hope i i, I don't i hope it doesn't come down to that because um, th there's also that aspect. Um, mm -hmm. I know the legal state tries to regulate the increase of rent, and okay, you, it mustn't be above this certain percentage of the of your annual rent, and that it has to be after a minimum of three years. Mm -hmm. I've not, I've definitely not spent three years in that apartment, right? But for me, I'll, I looked at it two ways. Okay, are we going to rely on the reasonable discretion of individuals, pro property owners, not to increase rent? Or do we reach out and have this conversation mm -hmm. on a state and national front? And talking because, about conversation, yeah. have you had any conversation with, uh, you know, as soon as you saw this sudden increments of 200,000. Yeah. Uh, did you reach out to the agent or the property owner to yes. say, and if you did, you know, what was the response? Okay, so um, I reached out and it, I told you I have a cordial relationship. Mm -hmm. We are not like that there are any issues. The, cat, the caretaker is female. So I reached out to her and I was like, you know what, the whole world is going through this. Contracts are being negotiated, projects are being negotiated, people are losing their jobs, everything is changing. We. I told her that I cannot afford to pay this amount. Mm -hmm. That you know what? Let us go through this period. I will pay. I will. I will, you pay I will work hard and pay my actual rent. Mm -hmm. But let us come back to the negotiation table when hopefully this has been over. So you know, she mentioned okay, she was going to relate with the landlord and have that discussion. And Do you have, have access? Direct access no, to no, your no, landlord? I don't. I don't have that access. And mm -hmm. there's no. There's no. You know, most times the, I, I actually don't have access to the landlord. Mm. So she said she was going to reach out to the landlord and have that conversation. And I made an appeal that, you know what, we shouldn't be um, talking about increase at this time. As of today, yeah. if you, your tweet has got over a thousand retweets. So it means that this current situation resonates with a lot of Nigerians. Yes. You also tweeted, you know, at the governor and saying, please, I beg you. And Lagos State, um, and yeah. uh, there's, there's yeah. another, you tagged another group of uh, persons at, at the governor. Yeah. Have you gotten any response uh, since then? Uh, you know, did anything happen since uh, the days uh, that, uh, that has passed after you tweet you tweeted at the governor? Okay. In all honesty, the senior special advisor to the to the governor on um, new media actually reached out, saying that okay, that he's seen my tweet and hopefully the governor would comment on it very soon. But if you know, if you if you have a bit of it, it, social media, you just have we just have to keep reaching out. Mm -hmm. And what I need, or what I hope to see, is that many people are able to have these conversations in all corners because it's possible. The the in New Jersey, there's a city in New Jersey that uh, that passed a temporary um, order inhibiting landlords from increasing rent and carrying out evictions. Mm -hmm. It's possible. It's just the humane thing to do. We shouldn't be tone deaf at this period. We are all humans. We're all in this together. Mm -hmm. And I mean, how much, how much is the landlord going to gain when there's so much at stake? People are hopefully, it, it just, it, hopefully there's a solution. Mm -hmm. If not, it doesn't look good. All right. If yeah. you can say that this is quite emotional for you yeah. and also yeah. for me who's listening to this. Yeah. I know there are other you know, countries, even Kenya for instance, where yeah. landlords have said, you know what, uh, because you pay on a monthly basis, we're going to waive uh, this month until things settle. So in, in your opinion, really, what best, how best can landlords be you know, considered? What should they be doing practically during this time to see that, you know, it's already tough to be in the situation of COVID-19, but to make it a little bit easier for others. Okay, so in all honesty, right, landlords have made a private investment and they hope to, they, they want to make money from it. They mm -hmm. put, put the money to get money out of it. So I understand that, yes, uh, it's a private investment. There's a two-way thing to it. I'll look at it that, okay, collect your rent. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, collect your rent, yeah. but don't increase. 
Not now, at Not least. now, at least. And then it still boils down to, even if that, you know, I told you that we, we can't re fully rely on, on um, discretionary reason on, or for, on people not to, not to increase their rent. But OK, if there can be a state nationwide directive, as, as a matter of fact, this is something that should be a national discourse. Mm. How are we, what are we going to do to make sure that the common man is not totally ripped apart? And then it still boils down to saying, OK, how do we pressure our government to invest more on public, affordable housing. public housing? Mm -hmm. So, you know, landlords, is, everyone is, is in it together. There's, nobody can say a clear-cut solution. I'm not saying they shouldn't take their rent, right. but not an increase at, at this time. time. If yeah. you, indeed, we're in it together. As yes. you have said, thank you very much for coming up. And thank we hope that much. something positive will I come out. And too. for thank all you. those who are also struggling that something would happen.